Eileen, on this problem, 8.4.3, uh, it's a problem about population proportions, and it's a difference of proportions, and we're given the alpha, of course, alpha in this case is 0.1, confidence level will be 90%. We're given a claim that proportion 1 is not equal to proportion 2. And that is a critical thing that you, you've got to read for. you got to understand what is the claim. In this case, they make it easy for you. The claim, because it contains a not equal, an inequality, in other words, it could be a, a not equal, a less than operator, a greater than operator, but it says the claim is not equal. Okay, I'll... Lean, I'm back. I had a disruption there. I think I was saying that because the claim is clearly specified here that proportion 1 is not equal to proportion 2, um, that tells you that the null is not the claim. And the null has to be the complement of this. The complement of not equal is equal. The next question, is this a right tail, left tail, or two tail? Well, anytime you've got not equal as the alternative, it's a two-tailed test, which means alpha goes on each side. Um, I don't know if you ran this or not. Let's just go ahead. I'm going to go to question, stat crunch. Okay, we have a <coughs> hypothesis test on a difference of proportions. Anytime we're working with proportions, we always use a Z. I'm going to go to stat, Z stat, whoops, two sample, I'm sorry, proportion stats, two sample, and in, in uh, stat crunch we use proportion stats. And we have a summary. I'm going to go up here. In sample one, we've got 27 for a number of successes. Observations is 75. In number two, we've got 45 successes. Observation 62. Our hypothesis test is already pretty well set up. Portion one minus portion two is equal to zero. And the alternative is not equal to zero. So we're going to go ahead and hit compute. And we get this result there. We get a, a Z stat, which we didn't check the, the uh, critical uh, value of, of Z, but I can show you that. But what we do know is our P value is very, very small. It's much less than our alpha of 0 0.01. Therefore, we reject the null hypothesis. Let me drag this out of the way. So our options are, it says, should we reject the null? Yes, we reject the null, and you had answered there is insufficient evidence to support the claim. Well, if, if the null had been the claim, you might have been able to say that. That's technically not the right way to say that. We always say we, you know, if there's insufficient evidence, it failed to reject the null. But in this case, there was sufficient evidence. We reject the null. And since the alternative is the claim, there is sufficient evidence to support the claim. I mean, on this next problem, I'm not going to solve the whole thing for you, but I want you to, to, to uh, listen to me here. Uh, again, it's a uh, difference between two population proportions, and it tells us the claim, population 1 is greater than or equal population 2. All right, so... If you've got an e equality, which this is, remember, an equality is an equal sign, a less than or equal operator, or a greater than or equal operator. So since this is an equality, this is the null hypothesis, and therefore the claim is the null hypothesis. The alternative has to be the complement of this null. And the complement is P1 is 
less than P2. So it would have a less than operator which points to the left and that should be your clue that this is a left tail test. Remember, it's always the direction that the operator and the alternative points that tells you whether it's a left tail or right tail test or a two tail. Again, the two tail being if you've got an inequality, not equal, between in, in the alternative. And you got the right answer. Fail to reject. There's insufficient evidence to reject the claim. In this case, because the claim is the null, if we fail to reject the null, there's insufficient evidence evidence to reject the claim and support of P1 is less than P2. So let's go on here and look at number four. Um, and you got this one right. So let's don't take any time on that one. Let's go to number five. You got part of it right. Let's see you specified um, the correct null and alternative you found the correct z critical or z sub zero as they say you said the rejection region would be any z greater than that critical value of z 2.33 you found the test statistic minus 496 you chose the correct answer fail to reject the null so what did you get wrong at the 1% significance level, which was alpha, there is sufficient evidence to reject the claim. Okay, let's go back. We said fail to reject the null. What was the claim? The claim in, is the proportion of the adults who are smokers in the state is greater than. Greater than is a operator that points to the right so that means the uh, is, is, is an inequality I should say therefore the claim is the alternative if we fail to reject the null that means there is insufficient evidence to support the claim you said there is sufficient evidence to reject the claim um, we said that there's insufficient evidence to reject the null, which means there's insufficient evidence to support the claim. It's, it's difficult sometimes in these word, word problems, but make sure you understand what is the claim and what is the, uh, the, altern uh, the uh, null and the alternative. Uh, if the claim is the null and you fail to reject it, that means there is insufficient evidence I'm sorry, if the claim is the alternative and you reject the null, that means there's insignificant, insufficient evidence to support the claim. Let's go to the next one. Okay, you got almost all of this right. And you're down here at the same conclusion again. Let's go up here and look. You got the correct um, statement of the uh, hypotheses. The null is less than or equal, and the alternative is greater than, which means it's a right tail test. Let's see. Identify the claim. And in the write-up, it says, Can you support the claim that the proportion of 12th grade males who said they had smoked in the last 30 days is greater than the proportion of 12th grade females? So we've got that greater than, the greater than, of males, the portion is greater than the portion of females. That's the alternative. That's the claim. And the null is uh, the complement. So down here, our answer was we reject the null. You got that right. So if you reject the null, that means you support the claim since the claim is the alternative. So we would say at the 10% significance level, there is sufficient evidence to support the claim. Again, the alternative was the claim. The alternative it always contains the inequality. In this case, the claim was an inequality, 
greater than, and since we reject the null, that means we support the claim. Let's look at the last one. Wow. And this one, let's see what you got. 0 0.039, 0 0.081. I want to pause here for a minute. Okay, Lane, on this last one, I took a few minutes just to look at it to see what you did. And um, you missed it. Uh, this is finding a confidence interval for a difference in a proportion or two proportions. And they give you the survey of a million. 68,000 students, of which 8.6 said they were planning to study engineering. Here's another survey of 1.476 million students taking the SAT, and they said 9.2% were going to study engineering, and we need a 90% confidence interval for the difference between the two proportions. They give you this long equation, which you can plug into your calculator or Excel, but we can do it using StatCrunch. I'm going to bring this up, and what I did here to save a little time, I label these first two columns in for the uh, number of uh, in each sample, one million sixty-eight thousand and one point four seven six million. We had eight point six percent successes in the first sample and 9.2 percent successes in the second sample. If you go to the proportion to sample with summary that I showed you before, you've got to have successes in observation, not percentages in order to do this. So what you can do it very easily with just a, a calculator on your phone, multiply the point uh, or the 8.6 percent times that to get the number of successes in the first sample and multiply that again to get the number of successes in the second sample and again you can do that on your your calculator on your phone for that matter well, once you get that data all you've got to do is put it in 91 eight four eight one zero six eight zero 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 number of successes in the second one was 135792 and 1476000. We want the confidence interval for the difference. Remember always to set that to be what you want. Don't do it like I do sometimes and leave it set in the default to 0.95. Click on compute and we get this answer. Uh, a lot of data there, but what you're really interested in, the lower limit is minus 0 0.0066, so it rounds to 0 0.00, minus 0 0.007, which is that answer, and the upper limit is minus 0 0.0005, and that still rounds to 0 0.005. So that's how you do that one. So I hope that helps.